Hold on, the spring market is here and we are still in a very unusual market. Supply, demand, a lot of record-breaking data, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Teresa Wellman with HomeownerExperience.com, and today we're talking about the March 2023 closed stats for Santa Clara County and San Jose, and we're going to get into the market rhythms and some of the interesting historical data that I am seeing. So here we are looking at a chart of Santa Clara County since 2000, and what I want to draw your attention to are two things. This yellow line, which is inventory, is very low. And as you can see, we have not seen much of an increase for the spring yet. That is very unusual. So we're gonna talk about some of those record numbers, but also the sales. Now they did pop up in March, which is nice. You see there's a big hole here, but we are still low in sales. So how is that playing out in the market? It's definitely a battle between supply and demand. Right now, demand is lower, and that is for many factors, economic uncertainty, higher interest rates with still high prices, some job layoffs, all these different factors that we've been watching are definitely affecting our demand, but our supply is at record low, making our market quite unusual for this time of year. So to put this into perspective, in March, Santa Clara County single family homes, there were 593 closings. That is the lowest March sales on record all the way back to 2000. But there are a couple of years that were somewhat close to that. 2020 March was 612 and 2008 March was 599. Now, completely different market conditions going on in those two times. Obviously in 2020, we had the pandemic that had a lot of people back out of sale, even though that was starting to be a great spring. And then in 2008, we were experiencing a huge increase in inventory and a lot of fear in the market. So buyers were just not as able to get in and stepping back. Today, that is not the case. We just have an interesting dynamic in the market. Now, inventory, there were 614 homes available for sale. This is single family homes in all of Santa Clara County. Now, there are 3 million people that live in Santa Clara County, so a very low number of inventory. The average for 23 years is 2,700 homes, but obviously, if we look back just 10 years, the number and the rhythm has been different. It's been more around the 12 to 1,500, so we're still half of that going into to the busiest buying months and that is pretty wild. So if you like this kind of content and perspective, give me a thumbs up or comment below. So let's talk about interest rates. Interest rates are a factor right now because those median prices are still so high, it's making hard for every buyer to get into the market. Now this is the conforming rates are high in the sixes. Jumbo rates we're seeing in the mid 5.5 for a 30 year fixed. And for a seven year, we're seeing in the low 5% range. Now, this is an improvement over the last several weeks because as the Federal Reserve raised their rate, the market responded favorably and mortgage rates actually got better or decreased. Now, unemployment is something else we have to watch with this demand. And there's been some layoffs in Silicon Valley, yes, but I've reported in previous videos that I'm just not seeing a huge impact there. I think a lot of talented workers are getting rehired with other companies and there's some distribution going on. And the data here is finally updated through February saying 3.1% unemployment. Again, still very low and below that 5% threshold I've talked about in my market prediction videos. I get a lot of requests asking how to keep up to date on our content and local events. So I recommend you sign up for our education focused newsletter at homeownerexperience.com slash newsletter. Once you do, you will get educational videos, including professional insight on the San Jose housing market, interviews with experts to educate homeowners, and get invited to our local event. Our mission is to revolutionize the real estate experience for you through a focus on education, transparency, and an unwavering commitment to your success. And the newsletter is a source to tie all the content together for you. Sign up, and if you don't like it, no worries. Unsubscribe anytime. So let's talk a little bit about San Jose market specifically. Now, San Jose has very low supply, especially for March, and it's very unusual to be this low this time of year, which is what we talked about for Santa Clara County. Now, demand is actually a little bit better in San Jose, maybe because of the more reasonable price points, but we're not at a record low number of sales. Uh, March 2020 was actually lower. 
than um, what we saw in March 2023. But historically in March, we should be seeing 400 to 450 sales and we're in the low 300. So we are off by quite a big chunk. Still though, with that low inventory, we're still only seeing one month supply. So that's the really unusual story here is that we have a really good market rhythm. Even though we're having a lot lower amount of sales, we're still seeing multiple offers in many cases. Let's look at the actual numbers and data. So here you can see that the average price came in just under 1.6 million for San Jose. Wow. And it's up quite a bit from last month. And that again is that supply and demand battle because as you can see, buyers on average are paying 3% over asking price. And I will tell you there's a distribution in the market that some properties and really good school districts are being slightly underpriced and maybe really well prepared or getting bid way over that. I just had one last night go several hundred thousand dollars over. But what I can tell you as far as values go is in South San Jose, for properties with good schools, say in Almaden Valley or Cambrian, we're definitely seeing around $1,000 a square foot. And when you move up the peninsula closer to West San Jose and areas like that and get really good schools, you're closer to $1,200 a square foot. Now that is pretty pricey and we all know how expensive it is to afford to live here in San Jose. Now, putting this into perspective, prices obviously are down 15% from last year. Ouch. But last year was when the market was crazy, on average 18% overbidding. Now, that was a short-lived about six months where the market went out of control and then rebalanced out. So that little bubble has now disappeared. And if we look two years back, we are actually up and actually up from most of 2021 prices today. So we're seeing that slight recovery and slight appreciation, which is nice. Prices today are charting very close to what they were in Q4 of 2021. The market really didn't take off um, with that bubble I mentioned until December 2021 and then into January, February, March. So that's when it got crazy. March was kind of the peak. It settled and then it's going to be interesting to see what happens in July for year over year numbers because July is when we really saw those prices significantly drop after those interest rates were going up in 2022. So hopefully that provides a little perspective. Stay tuned, I'm gonna get into more of the forecast and the condo market. Okay, so the forecast going forward, as I've talked in the past with my 2023 forecast video uh, going forward, it's really dependent on our inventory and then our demand, right? So demand is gonna be affected by unemployment and interest rates, which we both reported are doing okay. Interest rates could be better, obviously, but we're not gonna see those two or 3% numbers we saw in 2022 or in, and late 2021. We're not gonna see those again. Those were unprecedented. But if we can get below 5% into the four somewhere, we're gonna see a big boost in demand for the area. So will that happen later this year? It could, right? So that could change the market dynamics. But at this point, assuming interest rates are going to stay, that unemployment stays below the 5% rate, I expect we're gonna see about a 3% appreciation year over year. Now, if you look at these charts, you will note that we actually see an increase in prices usually more than 3% in the spring, and then some settling in July and August with a year over year from January to December of a slight positive. Now, the average in this area is more in the seven to 8% range, but this year, because we're still recovering and interest rates are higher and there's some job uncertainty and economic uncertainty, I just don't expect that. I expect closer to a 3%. When you're buying a home in this area, you obviously gotta think longer term, at least seven years, and then you're going to see profits. So I've got a great video on that if you want to know more about those numbers. So let's talk about the countywide condo market. Now the condo market is seeing a very similar ebb and flow and rhythm. Supply is low, demand is picking up for the spring buying season, and prices are very similar going back to Q4 of 2021. Overall, we've got a great look outlook coming forward. Now, if you're looking to get into this market and you're squished on the affordability factor, then the average price of the condo market might be more obtainable. We're at just over a million dollars, which is again recovered because of the supply and demand imbalance seeing 1.5% overbidding in the condo market, so not as much as the single family market. But again, because of the buyer getting in, they just don't have as much cash in the lower price points to pay over asking. And days of inventory like San Jose homes and like Santa Clara County is actually improving because our inventory is staying low and the sales are going up. So we still have a very strong seller's market with just about a one month inventory. So overall, Really good outlook going into the very busy spring market. The dictating factor is going to be that inventory right now. 
If the inventory stays low, it's gonna get a little crazy and there's gonna be a supply and demand overbidding issue that's gonna happen. So if you'd like to know what your home is worth today, you can run some actual numbers in your neighborhood. Check out the What's My Home Worth button link below. And if you're looking at starting your home buying search, there's a lot of tips you're gonna need to know in this market and to prepare yourself to be able to buy a home in this area. I have a free buyer consultation. I would love to share information with you, my tips and tricks I've learned over the 18 years of doing this full time so that you get off to a really strong start. So check the link below for more information. And next you should watch tips to make an offer on a house because we go through some of those details right here for our education for you. Thanks so much for watching.